Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by the Henry Mancini Award winner for outstanding achievements and contributions to the world of film and television music. You've heard his music in Thor, Brave, and Harry Potter, and The Goblet of Fire. His latest project was the Coronation March for King Charles III. We welcome composer Patrick Doyle. Hi there, Sean. How are you in Texas? Absolutely great, Patrick. Let's go beyond the mic. When writing such an important piece of music, one that time will associate with you, how do you balance the importance of the song with the vision you have of it? Well, it it was an honor to be asked to do this, Sean. But uh, I had I have a job to do, a job in hand, and my I got the head down and and followed the brief that they gave me. Uh, obviously, it's a very historic occasion, hugely exciting. But my role was to just to focus on the job and to to come up with the best work I could possibly come up with to be triumphant, uplifting, and memorable was were the three things he asked me to be. So I, I hope it fits the bill, but it's very exciting. It's such a historic occasion, and to be part of it is an unbelievable honour. It, it's a great lineage that I've followed, great composers before me in the past, like Handel, George Handel, and Elgar, Walton, Purcell. So to be part of that lineage is unbelievable. So... We shall see on the big day, but uh, so far, people seem very happy. Thanks for asking, Sean. The last time there was a coronation was 1953. How do you respect the moment while not getting lost in the past? Well, that was the year I was born, so I can't remember it, but certainly I remember watching a few years later the black and white footage of the the former Queen's coronation. I I think the, the fact that I've been asked to be part of such a historic, historic, uh, procedure in that, that the that King Charles has been very very kind to throughout his career to to or his life rather to support existing talent and to commission and to be the patron of up and coming talent. So being part of that lineage and to be asked by him is uh, an extraordinary thing and a great privilege. I've known him for over thirty years and throughout that time he's been a great supporter of my career. So. Uh, and I thought when I was very nervous to begin with, I thought to myself, well, if King Charles has asked me to do it, he obviously thinks I'm capable of it. So uh, it's a great privileged position to be in. After your 30 year personal and professional relationship and friendship with the king, what pressure did it put on you to make this march perfect for your friend? Well, that's a very good question. And that's that's a very good way to look at it. First and foremost, I felt an obligation to to him. Uh, because he had asked me and has been so kind to me. Then you imagine all the people, the millions of people that are going to be watching this incredible historic event. So obviously that that sort of weighed heavily on my shoulders. And uh, there's just some responsibility to my own work in that I bring my very best to every project I'm part of, whether it's for a, a local church or for something so extraordinary as this So that's been my work ethic, and uh, I couldn't have worked any harder. Now, how did the limitations of the site limit to what you could have had performed as part of the march? Well, it's a great question because there is an orchestra. It's a coronation orchestra, and it's comprised of musicians from all over the UK, and it's made up of various orchestras that the former Prince of Wales was the patron, and uh, they are placed in the organ loft in the abbey, which has room for a small chamber orchestra. But the the question you asked is very important because we were, it was an odd combination because of the space up there. I don't want to get technical, but it certainly was the traditional symphonic lineup, but very similar. So that was also an extra challenge, not only for me, for the 11 other composers who are part of it and people who are doing other musical arrangements. So that was a challenge. It's always been um, up there in the William Walton's March in 1953 was also played with the same orchestra set up in the same uh, organ loft space. It's time for the rocking eight. Eight random questions, Patrick. All you have to do is answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. (laughs) What do you think is the best Kenneth Branagh movie? Henry V. Favorite Disney character other than Cinderella? Mickey Mouse. What's the best thing about your wife? A heart. Patrick, what's the favorite instrument that you write for? The violin. Why? Because I don't play it, and I always dreamt of being able to play the violin. And it's the nearest thing to the human voice. Where's the key place where you do all your writing? 
in, in, in Shepparton Film Studios in London. Patrick, do you think that Tottenham will bounce back after the trouncing versus Newcastle? I never get involved in, in politics or football. <laughs> <laughs> How about the best opera tenor of all time? Oh, Caruso. Of all the movies you've scored for, was there one that still holds a special place in your heart? Henry V and Bra- well, Henry V has a first movie, but also Brave set in Scotland. If I can say two films. How has your Scottish heritage helped you through all your years of doing the incredible work that you've done? It's everything. It's a bedrock with which I launch every every sort of ounce of my DNA. It's incredible. It informs everything I do. It even has it even forms the music I've written for King Charles for the coronation. There are snippets of it everywhere. You can't you can't shake it off, and it's a wonderful thing not to be able to shake off. It's everything. My family are an incredibly musical family, all wonderful singers. And I've had an, an astonishingly fruitful artistic upbringing, so I'm very grateful to my Scottish roots and heritage. It's time for one big question with composer Patrick Doyle be on the mic. Patrick, how did your fight with cancer change the way you look at life? Well, if I didn't have my wife by my side and my family and the National Health Service in the UK, I wouldn't be here. And of course, life is completely different. It's That's Patrick Doyle. So episode B, you're a different person. You, you're never the same. And what it has given me is sort of bodily internal warning signs to stop where that pressure is and, and not go neither again, because I'm sure that was part of the the problem. But um, life is very, very sweet and every day is Christmas. Now that people have heard the march, what do you want people to think? Well, I would hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll hear all the the uh, the lovely heart that I put into it and and the the homage it is to King Charles and it will be uplifting it will be memorable and it will add to the excitement of the day and add add some joy and excitement to their lives too hopefully in a musical way he loves scoring Henry V writing for the violin and never talks about soccer or politics the composer for the coronation march for King Charles the Third Patrick Doyle. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you very much, Sean. My great pleasure. Give my love to Texas. Whenever you're in Texas, you're always welcome to visit. That, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic Shortcut.